Hey, Shalom Israel. I'm Captain Tazawana to my right. Soldier Uriel. All right, today is 15 minutes again with the captains. We're going to deal with the topic of lust, how to deal with lust. You brothers and sisters that's just coming into the understanding that you're an Israelite in the faith of Christ, you got to understand that you're going to deal with lust as you're dealing with it. All right, so we're going to go through the scriptures and see what um, our forefathers, how they dealt with the spirit of lust and what they did and what we should learn from in the scriptures on what to do concerning lust and what not to do. All right, so let's deal with it real quick. Let's get the book of John, chapter 5, verse 39. Read that. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 39. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures. Do what? Search the scriptures. The Lord said, do your research. Search the Bible. Search the scriptures. Let's see why do we search the scriptures. Read on, come on. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Because when you search the scriptures, when you research, when you study the Bible, you get eternal life. You learn from the many uh, examples that are in the Bible to do good in your life. Alright? So this is why we search the scriptures. Read on. And they are they which testify of me. And the Bible is what testifies of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, all right, of the nation of Israel, okay? You got to understand that. Because when you read from Genesis on to Revelations, it speaks about the examples on how a man and a woman of Israel should live their lives, period. And that's how you obtain eternal life. Let's get to this real quick. Why do we read the Bible? Why do we study? To learn from those things that are written in the Bible. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Read that real quick. Romans 15, verse 4. Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So Paul said it in the book of Romans too. He said, listen, for whatsoever things are written aforetime, Christ said it in um, John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, search the scriptures. Study. Read on, come on. Were written for our learning. They were written for what? Our learning. So the purpose of what was written in our history in the Bible is written for what? Read it again. For our, for our learning. For your learning. To learn from those examples. And we're going to get many of historic um, events that happen in our history that we learn from. All right. Read on. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Because the scriptures give a man and a woman comfort mm -hmm. of their hard times or hardships that they're dealing with. For example, we're dealing with lust, right? Right. So, for you to get comfort, you find that within the scriptures. How do you gain comfort from the spirit of lust? Or how do you think towards it or subdue it? How do you mortify that spirit of lust that's within you that we all deal with? Mm -hmm. You got to search the scriptures and take and learn from the scriptures as you see it in the Bible. Okay, keep reading. Is that it on that? Read that on. we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So when you read in the scriptures that you might obtain hope, which means what? Perseverance out of that evil that you're in. All right. So let's dig into it real quick. James. Chapter 4, verse 5. Let's get that real quick. James 4 and 5. So, concerning lust, we all have it. We all deal with it, but it's about how you handle it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep saying that. It's about how you handle it. What are you doing to subdue that? Because many examples of lust are out here in the world. You have many evils that's out here. You got social media. You have... Uh, the TV screen, right? The TV television. You have the cell phone. You have many of these things you use for attributes of to bring lust within us. All right. So what you have to do is know what to do and what not to do concerning these things. You got uh, the out here in the world. You you understand how certain people dress. How they speak, what they eat, what they do, drugs, etc. Right. Those things are many attributes of lust. So how do you control or how do you subdue that? All right, we're going to go on in, in the scriptures. Here we go. Read that. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 5. Right. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us. The Bible is speaking, speaking about our spirit. The spirit that dwelleth with us. Read that again from the top. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? The book of James is saying right here is saying, do you think the scriptures say for no reason that the spirit that dwells within us because we all dealing with a certain type of lust that we're dealing with, if it's multiple lusts or one or whatever, mm -hmm. you should know what you're dealing with, what you're struggling through with, what you're, um, have, what you're battling with. It says the spirit that dwelleth within us, it do what? Lusteth? Come on. 
the spirit that dwells in us lusteth to envy. It lusteth to envy. All right. So that's why we implement fasting and prayer right. and our spiritual growth. Because if you can forsake the food and the water, which is a normal lust that mm -hmm. you have to be hungry or drink water, guess what? You can subdue the spirit of hatred. Right. You can subdue the spirit of anger, murder, adultery, etc. You understand what I'm saying? So what you got to do is you got to understand how to think towards lust. You all have it. You got to know which, what you're dealing with, for lack of better words. You all have it. So we're going to show you how you should be subduing it, how to subdue it, etc. All right, here we go. Let's get into it some more. Give me the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. Actually, you know what? Keep reading where you at. Yeah, verse 6. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. That he is speaking of is God in the spirit of Christ. Read on. He giveth more grace. Read on. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, uh -huh. but giveth grace unto the humble. It says God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Because only a proudful person will tell you, listen, I ain't got no drug addiction. Bro. Okay, brother, so get off the drugs. I don't want to get off the drugs right now, but I ain't got no addiction. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Only the uh, only the adulterer will tell you, man, we're just going out for a dinner. It's not adultery or nothing. Brother, you married. Go home to your wife. Right. That's adultery. You understand? So, mm -hmm. dealing with lust. That's, when, you, when, when you have a humble spirit towards what you're dealing with, you're, you're coping with yourself. You know what, you know what your problem is. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's why the Lord says, the Lord resists of the proud and give of grace unto the humble. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a humble spirit and understand and realize what you're dealing with and be true with yourself. Right. Are you really, what are you really dealing with? Be humble with yourself and go to the scriptures to fix it. Be with men and women of understanding to help you get through that spirit that you're dealing with mm -hmm. along with fasting and praying. All right. So here we go. Get that in Romans chapter 3 verse 23. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned. We what? For all have sinned. Ain't nobody all the way perfect. We all dealing with things that we're dealing with. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with things. Brother right next to me. Soldiers, he's dealing with things. Right. You, that's watching right now, you're dealing with things. We all know that. Read on. And come short of the glory of God. We all come short, but doesn't give us license to continue in that. Right. Read on. Being justified freely by his grace. Now, we're going to understand and, and, and get an example of what grace is. Because, yes, you, we all fall short and we sin. But we have grace. What is the grace part? Because the grace is that time period that you have to get whatever faults that you have or your shortcomings with God correct. All right? That's what grace is. Give him that real quick. Come on. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God... That bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Right, read on. Teaching us. What does grace do? It, teaching us. It teaches you to do what? That denying ungodliness. Okay, so the first step of grace and understanding grace outside of what we're dealing with as far as sin, you have grace when you're in that. You're not supposed to be sinning. Now, grace teaches you to deny what? Denying ungodliness. The first step is it teaches you to deny ungodliness. Okay, so what is godliness? Keeping God's commandments. Right. Read on. Come on. And worldly lust. And what? And worldly lust. Now, that's why we're dealing with this topic right here. Because there's a lot of worldly lust that I mentioned earlier. You find worldly lust on the social media, mm -hmm. on a lot of platforms that you see, whether it's uh, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever. Uh, Instagram, they put that stuff out there for you. And they have it on your, what they call sometimes, explore pages mm -hmm. or your random search sometimes on the internet. You click on something for a food ad and something else come up crazy. Right. Lust is out there to get you, to draw you into it, to uh, control your actions in a sinful manner. But we're trying to get you to re recognize that when you see the lust, how to think towards it, which is you run from it. You run from the sin. All right. Read on. Come on. So... It says, lust, I mean, excuse me, um, grace is what? Read on from the t that top verse. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation mm -hmm. hath appeared to all men. From the grace of God that giveth us of salvation has appeared unto all men. Read on, come on. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Grace 
uh, teaches you to deny ungodliness, read. And worldly lust. And worldly lust, read on. We should live soberly. We should do what? Live soberly. Even live soberly, which means what? Clear thinking, not drunken, not confused, not uh, passive, not uh, uh, weak in understanding. It says you have to be sober minded, teaching us to be sober, read. Righteously and to be righteous read and godly now. What is righteous? What is righteous? Let's get to that real quick. Uh, what is that? Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25 What is righteous? Righteousness righteous same thing synonymous So grace actually it doesn't mean now. Nah, I got grace. I got the grace of the Lord on me grace means what? I have a time period to get myself right and all praises for that. All right read that real quick What the book is of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25? Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. So go back to that concerning grace. Grace teaches us to be sober-minded and to be what? Righteously. To deal righteously, to be righteously. Read on. And godly. And godly. Read on. In this present world. So to be righteous means that we be godly, which is keeping God's commandments right now. Why? Because the Bible said in this present world. Right, right now here in what? 2019 mm -hmm. and whatever else comes in the future of your lives of us to be in Israel. You got to understand that right now here on earth, we got to be righteous. All right. Sober. Minded and godly, which is all in all keeping God's commandments. So be true to yourself. You know what you're dealing with. Lust comes in many of forms. It comes in the spirit of covetousness, meaning wanting things that's not yours. And you sin to get it. Uh, lust comes in forms of maybe you have a problem of uh, sex. Maybe some of you brothers and you sisters are dealing with the spirit of porn. Okay. Some of y'all might be dealing with the spirit of lust that you have on you of getting high. All right. Some of y'all may um, like love the drugs, love the pleasure of you engulf yourself in sports mm -hmm. in uh, games, etc. You engulf yourself in it. That's a certain lust that we all have to recognize in ourselves and change it. All right. Mortify it. Suppress it. OK. What else people deal with? Um, the love of cars, money. the love of money. People have a certain lust for that, all right? And it becomes sin. None of those things, except for the porn, that's that's evil as hell. Right. Um, a, a lot of these things that we deal with, they become sin when you break God's commandments in order to get that, which is why I mentioned covetousness earlier. So read the scripture real quick. This is how we have to think towards it. Read that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify therefore your members. The word mortify means to subdue. Subdue, subdue. It says, subdue, therefore, what? Read. Your members, uh -huh. which are upon the earth. There you go again. It says, right now you had a chance to subdue your members. It's talking about your mind, your thoughts, everything, your whole body mm -hmm. that are upon the earth right now. Your purpose right now is you learning that you're Israel and the faith of Christ is subdue the members that you have. What are those members? Read on. Fornication. Those are one of the members that overcomes us sometimes. Fornication. All right, sex outside of marriage, okay? Um, many fornications that you read about in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18 on down. Mm. Fornications, all right, which is, um, read on, it's going to explain, read on. Uncleanness. Uncleanness, all right, dealing with a woman on her menstrual, that's unclean. Right. Read on. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affections, man on man, woman on woman, the Bible calls that sodomy, read on. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence literally is a definition of saying in the scriptures you're not supposed to be in porn. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters that y'all that y'all dealing with that in that whole industry. Read on, come on. And covetousness. And covetousness. Covet there's another type of lust, worldly lust, and covetousness because you do anything for the lust of what you see to get it. Mm -hmm. All right. A brother sees cars, clothes, women, and whatever. <laughs> right. And you do anything to get that. What they call it, get rich or die trying. Mm -hmm. That's that lifestyle, all right, that you see all on the TV screen. All right. That false image of uh success, which is really sin. All right. Keep reading. Which is idolatry. It's all idolatry because you worship these things and you deem it and you 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 comfort yourself, which is your own lust. Real quick, check this out. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 13. Because you can't blame nobody else for the lust but yourself. It just doesn't drop on you or you can't blame nobody else. He put this lust on me. She did this to me, that, mm -hmm. that and the third. We all 
um, must take responsibility of our own actions and our own thoughts. All right, and that's what the Lord is trying to prepare us for in these last days, because times is going to get harder and more serious and more wicked. So you have to gird your minds up in the scriptures. Read that verse, please. The Go book ahead. of James, chapter one, verse thirteen. Right. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Because people say, man, God did this to me. I can't believe this. This right. is what happened. This will have this, this, that, and third happen to me. I can't believe this is what God, why would the Lord let this happen to me? Mm -hmm. No, you have the wrong understanding. You have the wrong mind process. You have the wrong processing of the Lord. All right, read on. For God cannot be tempted with evil. God, if you're godly, you can't be tempted with evil. Right. That's what it's going into. Read on. Neither tempteth he any man. And neither will God tempt any man. Read on. But every man is tempted. God will never say here. He go to he go to porn. Let me see what you're gonna do with it. He'll never do that. God don't tempt or test or try people with the sin that he's trying to get you out of. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture says this next. Read that verse again. But every man is tempted. But what? But every man is tempted. How? When he is drawn away of his own lusts. The only reason why you're tempted or being uh tried, I guess you could say, or uh read that verse again. But every man is tempted. But it's just the script. Read that verse again, excuse me. But every man is tempted. The scripture says, but every man is tempted. How? When he is drawn away of his own lust. Only you tempt yourself when you're drawn away with your own lust. Which means what? When you see that picture, you don't cancel out of it. Mm. Or you don't put the phone down. You you um, you entice yourself. You entertain that spirit. Mm. So when, because you see it. You can't. You, we ain't blind. You see it, but what, your next action, what you're supposed to do, is get that off the screen, mm -hmm. or walk the other way when you see the big booty black woman down the street. I'm just mm -hmm. say it plain like that. That's what it is. Right. Or you sisters, when y'all see men and you're married, or sisters that are single, you see men and you want them just for that lust of sex or how they look. You know what I'm saying? So you're not supposed to. Uh, be interested in others just for their appearance, all right? There's other values that we should go by, thus saith the Lord, right. which is, first and foremost, if you want a spouse or anything, don't let, don't let your lust drive you. You're supposed to let godliness be your interest in an individual, all right? And not only that, okay, so you're dealing with lust. When it comes to drugs, when it comes for money and etc., you're not supposed to let those things, those uh, vain values, drive you because you'll do anything to get it which is sin read that verse again come on james chapter 1 verse 14 right but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust mm -hmm. and enticed and enticed read and what happens when you're enticed because now you're fully in it you feel like you can't get out you actually convince yourself that this is the way to go I'm going to do whatever I can to get this money. Get rich or die trying. You'll forsake the Lord's Sabbath day. Mm. You'll forsake anything you want to just to live that high life or mm. that dream of a prosperous living. Read on. Come on. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then when lust have conceived. Then when lust have conceived in you, meaning this is embedded in you. It's bred in you. Now mm. it's born inside of you. It can't, it's nothing that you can do to get it out. Read on what happens. Read on. It bringeth forth sin. Because the result or the reward of lust is sin. Mm. All right? That's what happens. Read on. Read and on. sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The wages of sin is death. Thus saith the Lord. Romans 6. Hold what you got. Romans 6, verse 23. I'm going to show you that. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages of sin is death. What now? For the wages of sin is death. Which is why we're trying to teach this class of lust right now so that you won't have the reward or the wages of death go back to that in james the book of james chapter 1 and verse 15 mm -hmm. then when lust hath conceived and when lust hath conceived it's in you now read on because you didn't want to move your eyes or think differently towards what you lusted for read on it bringeth forth sin. It bringeth forth what? Sin. It bringeth forth sin in you. Now you're acting out the lust that you see. It went from you now looking at it to now you knowing you married, brother mm -hmm. or sister. You know you married. Now you're engaging in conversation to continue the lust. Read, come on. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And after that, now you have blood on your garment. Now you have blood on you because you've committed the sin of whatever your lust draws you to. Mm. All right? Read on. Is that it? That's it. Okay, that's it. Let's get to that. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. So you have to be humble, as we mentioned earlier. God has 
uh, mercy or grace on the humble. So the first start steps of you being humble is you have to subdue your understanding. Come to terms with yourself and find out and realize and know what you're dealing with. All right, what your problem is. Read that real quick. The book of Second Edris, chapter 14, verse 34. Right. Therefore, if so, be that ye will subdue your own understanding. Therefore, you have to subdue your understanding. You are coming into this understanding that you are an Israelite in the faith of Christ. All right. You have to subdue your own understanding, which means what? All that filth that you learned before, throw it away. Now you come refreshed with a new mind. All right. Read on. And reform your hearts. And reform your hearts. Reform. Change. Reformate. All right. Reformat. All right. It says, and reform your hearts. Your heart is what? Your mind. Let's get to that and make it plain real quick. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Reform your hearts. Change your mind. Refresh. Reboot <laughs> your hearts, your minds. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For far, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. See, what comes out of your heart, not the fleshly organ, but your mind. It proceeds thoughts, all right? Your heart is synonymous for your mind. Go back to that real quick in Second Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Therefore... If so, be that ye will subdue your own understanding. Because thoughts come from your mind, your heart. Okay, read on. And reform your hearts. All right. Ye shall be kept alive. Ye shall be kept alive. Why? Because now since I've reformed my thoughts or my heart or I have subdued my understanding, my actions from me subduing my understanding will, bring, will allow the Lord to have grace upon me. I understand what grace is. I'm going to be godly and not choose the wicked route mm -hmm. of the lust that's driving me. I'm going to be godly, subdue my understanding, and do what thus saith the Lord is. All right? So, judge that in between your own walk and your own life. Am I doing, am I living a life of true biblical grace or am I going about my own worldly lust? Mm -hmm. Which one are you doing? Examine yourself. All right? Because a lot of people like to, uh, uh, be tolerant or like to not examine themselves as far as what they're dealing with mm. all right and they overlook their faults so we can't be like that coming into this understanding the lord has mercy on the humble Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.